Hello, this is a tutorial on how to plot time series data. So we're going to be working with pandas, but some of the transformations we're going to do the data is we're going to initially plot the original data um, on the left. We're going to sample the data, um, take a fraction of the data and plot it. Normally when you sample data it's because you have too much data or you just want to see how a small portion of the data looks or get rid of some noise. And we're also going to be smoothing the data which is the ruling mean, um, as well as uh, applying regression to a subset of the data. Um, in this case, it will be linear regression and finding its R squared value. So the first thing we have to do is get a data set. Um, and in this tutorial, I'm not particularly interested in which data set. So I just got um, some random stock data from Google and it's time series data. So this cell over here um, gets the data. And the index for this data, and this pandas data frame, is date, or the index name is date. And if you go see, as you go down this column, um, the date increments upward. And the four columns we have are open, high, low, and close. In this tutorial, we're going to be worrying about the open price of data, or the open price. Um, which is this column going downward. And so uh, Google.head is essentially just printing out the first five entries um, of our data frame. Um, the next thing uh, we're going to do, um, this is more of just my preference because it's easier to work with um, non-date time data. And What's really good about this data is the index is date time, which means you can graph um, against uh, time, which normally it's a bit harder to do that. But pandas makes it so instead of having tick marks in the x-axis, as you see over here, these, this is the x-axis, and that's um, numerical in nature, you can have um, dates, you know, 2010 through 2016, which is a nice feature of pandas, and that's a lot of that's a big reason why people use pandas for time series data, Python. So in this cell over here, um, this is just a row down from where we were. Um, we're basically adding another column ticks, which basically is um, making an alias for the date. So as we go down, the ticks increase, and as the original index, um, the date, it increases, go down. So it will be very easy to plot price against ticks. And then uh, opening price against um, date. So this first plot is plotting ticks versus open price. And this is, I think, from 2010 to 2015. I can check again. So this is the original plot of the data. Um, as you'll see, um, this is a pretty big trend upward over, the, over time, and you have some sort of major outlier over here. Um, it's pretty unlikely um, on a given day that a stock will fall that high, so a lot of times people um, will find various methods um, to remove these kind of outliers. So um, in any sort of time series, um, sometimes you have too much data, right? So um, what this line over here does is we're taking um, the entire data frame and returning one-tenth of the original uh, data frame. So um, what you're putting on here is the data frame, just one-tenth. And one of the problems you'll notice is the dates become um, out of order from what they originally were, which is a major problem if you just want to do a line plot. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to reorder the data, i.e. the index, by the tick value because the ticks go from zero um, upward and it's uh, pretty easy to sort uh, values by ticks, um, i.e. day. And then we'll reprint out the data frame and you'll see um, tick value goes up over time versus before it was just uh, completely out of order. <laughs> So the next thing we'll do is we'll plot ticks versus the open price. 
and after that we'll plot the original plot versus the sample plot and you'll see the sample plot has less data points um, and that's some normally you, I don't think you'd plot the sample plot it's just you want a fraction of your original data size and this code over here um, all it is is a simple subplot with the original plot on the left and the sample plot on the right. I left this code up here in case um, you guys want to do subplots. So um, one really cool thing you can do in pandas is you can change the index of the data frame. Um, this is um, a way of resetting the index, um, i.e. making uh, the index a new column and essentially um, having numeric uh, index afterward. So um, this subplot below, um, I'll get to what this is in a second. It's just the original data versus the sample data, i.e. one-tenth of data, and then uh, smooth data, which is essentially, in this case, taking a rolling mean. And what that means is, um, for an 80 um, tick window, or 80 day window in this case, I imagine, um, we're finding the mean and only plotting those values. Um, this helps get rid of outliers while still incorporating all the data. And it just is a prettier plot to begin with, or in total. As you'll see, this is a lot smoother than the original data. And it's probably a bit easier to fit an regression model to. So what this plot over here is plotting the original uh, data on, and the smooth data on the same plot. And you'll see the smooth data essentially takes the form of the original data and it's pretty good at um, removing outliers. Um, removing is probably not the best word, but it, it's good enough for this tutorial. So what you'll see down below, this is the same plot as before except for instead of showing ticks, we show um, years. And if you had um, a smaller time period, if this was like 2010 for the starting date and 2011 for the end date, chances are you'd see different months. Um, Pandas is wonderful. It's a great library. And however, um, it's important to note that in order to plot against time, it really helps to have um, the data type um, be date time because um, that's what pandas recognizes. So this, these two cells in particular are just uh, filtering the data from tick 800 to 1200. And the reason why I'm doing this is to first of all demonstrate uh, filtering by ticks and also to have a nice semi-linear region. So um, we're importing sklearns lin regression model. And uh, re regression is nice. It's parametric in nature. And you're going to get an equation of the line, which is very nice. So this code, um, understanding how it works is probably not the most important thing. But essentially, with sklearn packages, you essentially fit your data to a model. And then, um, depending on the model, you can output some sort of equation or um, in the end, the entire goal is usually to predict, um, based on input values, what the output should be um, based on the model. <laughs> and this is probably not the most clear, so I will probably leave a link to the documentation. And down below, this is just showing the predicted values um, if uh, you fit linear regression to the data. So I have this data frame predictions and I have the data frame uh, filtered uh, Google which essentially is from 800, uh, tick 800 to tick 1200 and what this line over here does is it's doing an inner join with the filter Google and the predictions up above. And it's by index, so 
essentially you're basically just adding a column to the data frame. <laughs> and down below, you'll see um, the smooth data um, plotted next to um, the predicted outcome. Um, and that essentially concludes our tutorial. And if for some reason you want to find the R squared value, it's pretty simple. Um, sklearn has um, a method where you can basically find the R squared value. And all that is is the actual value or the actual value um, that you're predicting against and the predicted value. And the documentation for this is um, this URL. Uh, thank you. If you have any issues, if you need help with something, please let me know. I will do my best to accommodate you.